Today I'm so excited because I'm sharing with you the ultimate guide you will need to make one of the most iconic food of the Jewish cuisine found in the Torah and that is the challah bread recipe. This challah bread recipe is foolproof even for beginners and can be done by everyone including us busy buddies that are pressed for time. This challah guide will include how to prepare the recipe with all my tips and tricks, how to shape the challah with five and six strands, as well as how to make beautiful round challah. And by the same token, I'm letting you in on this Jewish tradition called Afrashat challah that allowed thousands of people to see miracles, dreams come true, and more through fulfilling this commandment and following these steps to prepare bless, shape, and bake this special Jewish traditional food that doesn't only nourish your body, but also nourishes your soul. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Sarah Malka, and on my channel, I share all facets of my Orthodox Sephardic Jewish life as a full-time working mom with small kiddos. So please don't forget to leave this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let me put on a pretty tehel and let's jump into it. Before I start any activity, and that includes cooking or baking, I always ask God to give success to the activity because I don't know about you, but many times, even when I use the exact recipe that I have made so many times, the outcome can be an absolute disaster, even if usually it is amazing. So by praying to God for help, giving a bit of charity or tzedakah, I feel I'm putting all the chances on my side for the recipe to be a success. Once I'm done my prayer, I will start the challah that is so special that making it can be compared to the story of our life and the ingredients is compared to what we need to have a sense of fulfillment. I start the recipe with the yeast cake that could be compared to the heart or the motor of the challah. Without it, our bread will go nowhere. The two cups of warm water acts as the base that will allow the reactions to take place between our love triangle, the granulated yeast that interestingly enough needs to sink down before it can rise up, like many times in our life when we feel we hit rock bottom, but when we think about it, we use this bottom as a springboard to propel us to the highest heights. Then, the ascension of the yeast will be fueled by the sugar that brings out the best in every situation. I whisk everything together thoroughly for a minute or so, and at this point you might be asking yourself why not just add the yeast to the dry ingredients? Well, it is because sometimes the yeast is not active anymore, so by doing the yeast cake we make sure our challah will be nice and airy, God willing. I mix until I see foam at the surface of the mixture like this. I will cover the bowl and set it aside until we're ready to use it in a few minutes. I take out my mixer and rest assured if you do not have a mixer, this recipe works perfectly when you do it by hand. I'm using my Bosch mixer from the Mum series and I will leave the link in the description box below. Because we have the ability to elevate anything mundane into something more spiritual through the work of our hands, the perfect challah is the one that is made and baked with positive intentions and with love. And this is why when I add my bread flour, I pray to God that God will sustain us physically and spiritually. When I add my sugar, I pray for sweetness in our life, for us as a family, and for you too, my sweet friends. Finally, I will add salt to the dry ingredients, praying that God would only send us tears of joy. After closing the mixer to avoid any spillage, I will mix everything for about a minute to make sure that there are no pockets of salt or sugar in our mixture. 
While it is mixing, I take out my eggs and of course I made sure to verify them one by one previously because before using any eggs, I make sure they have no blood spots as eating raw blood would be not permitted. I made a complete video on how I check our food to make sure it is kosher to remove as well any insects and you would be surprised how many insects I found even in commercial cake mix. I will add the link to the video above and in the description box below for you to be able to watch it after this video. When I add the eggs, because the eggs represent the circle of life, I pray that all the people in my life will have a fulfilling and meaningful life from the beginning of their life to the end of their life until 120 years old and more God willing. I add the eggs one by one, making sure the egg is completely incorporated before adding the next one, which will result in the fluffiest challah. While I'm adding the eggs, let me tell you a bit more about the power of challah. Challah comes from the word chol. Chol means mundane, ordinary, and physical matters, and one of the physical items of this world is eating. When we eat challah, we show how we can turn something as ordinary and materialistic as eating into something kadosh or holy. Women have the power to bring out from the earth below, or Adama, all its gifts and then elevate them towards heaven. This is one of the power of challah. After adding the eggs one by one, I will continue mixing everything for two to three minutes to incorporate all the eggs and the different ingredients. When I add my neutral oil, here I'm using sunflower oil, I pray that our life should go smoothly as a well-oiled machine. I mix everything again for a minute or two until everything is fully combined. Finally, it is time to add the cake yeast and look at this height. If your yeast does not bubble like this, it is most probably not enough active anymore and it is time to buy a new pack of yeast. As you can see, it is very airy, like a yeast whipped cream. When I add the yeast, I pray to God He will always elevate us to fulfill our true potential. It is time to mix, mix, mix. I will put it on low speed and let it mix for about two to three minutes until once again, it is fully combined. When the dough looks like this and you see on the side of the bowl, almost nothing is sticking anymore. I add another one to two cups of warm water. Because water represents life, I pray to God he should grant us a good life filled with joy, closeness to him and good health. On a side note, if it is your first time doing this recipe, add the water in four increments of half a cup each and let the water be fully incorporated in your dough before adding the next half a cup of water. This way you can monitor how tacky the dough gets and avoid for it to be too wet or too dry. Once fully incorporated and the dough reaches this wet clay kind of consistency, then I will close the lid and mix it for another 10 to 12 minutes on going re. This will help the gluten be fully developed and will give the best result with a fluffy and beautiful challah. After this kneading time, I will let the dough rise in the bowl for an extra 15 minutes and after the resting time is over, when I remove the lid, you can see the dough has risen nicely in the bowl and the gluten had time to activate and develop a bit more, making this dough already so much more elastic, which is a great sign, thank God, that this dough is going to be fluffy and airy. When I remove the dough from the bowl, the dough is still a bit tacky to touch and creates these web-like strings when I pull the dough from the mixer bowl 
And again, this is a great sign telling us we are on the right path to have a very light and airy khala, God willing. With the khala dough, I make a boule to increase the surface tension of the dough and to have the best rise possible. At first, I just pull the dough together and I create a ball with my dough. Then I pull the dough towards me while tucking the outer edges of the dough under the ball of dough. I turn the dough 90 degrees and continue the process until I have a boule or ball. Once I have a nice ball and the surface is nice and tight, I will put my dough in my chemical-free recycling bag that I conveniently placed inside a very large bowl. I add some oil on the top to keep the dough hydrated while it is rising. Because yeast will have more potency if there's no air in its surroundings, I will take out the air from the bag completely. Then I will knot the bag and let the dough rise or on the counter one to two hours at room temperature if I do my khala right after the rise. Or if I have no time to do the khala now, I can leave it in the fridge overnight or again, like today, I will leave the dough all day in the fridge and I will finish my challah when I come back from work. I change quickly into my favorite modest outfit to go to work. I made a full video on how I dress modestly for work, at home, and on special occasions. And I will leave the link to the video above and in the description box below for you to be able to watch this video after this one. I will see you in a few hours. After letting the challah reach room temperature for about an hour once I'm home, I can finally open the bag. As you can see, the bag is full of gas showing how the yeast had a good time reacting with all the other ingredients. Finally, I can degas the dough and I think this is my favorite part. When I degas my dough, I pray to God he should help me keep my ego in check and keep me humble. As you can see, the dough is much more elastic than before and it has a good recoil showing that we still have a strong yeast that will allow us to roll and shape the dough with ease. And now comes the most crucial part of making challah, elevating this physical challah recipe to the status of soul food through the afrashat challah or taking of the challah that is a commandment found in the Torah. I recite the blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidesha'anu Bemitzvotah Vetzivanu Leafrish Chala Terumah I then remove a piece of the dough called Chala and for our Ashkenazi brothers, this piece of Chala has to weigh a certain amount of grams but as per us Sephardim, we only take a small amount, whatever the weight. Once the Chala is removed, I will say the moment after taking the khala is a time of profound spiritual closeness to God. It is a conduit between this reality and a level far beyond the walls of our kitchen. I pray for the well-being of my family, my friends, and of course you, my sweet extended family. I take my little ball of dough and set it aside. It will be left in the freezer and burnt on Passover. Some will burn it right away to render it inedible on the spot. I put on my favorite apron because otherwise I will put dough all over my clothes. And yes, you saw it well. I do change when I come back from work and when I know I'm gonna cook or bake to be more comfortable but also to avoid staining my clothes. Do you also do that? As soon as you come home, you change into something more comfortable? Let me know in the comments below. The first step into preparing the strands for a khala is making equal balls of dough to make the most delicious, good-looking, and evenly baked khala. 
I separate the dough in balls of 120 grams and I will make a few balls of 40 grams for a special design I have created for Shabbat and more specifically for Rosh Hashanah when we have the custom as Orthodox Jews to make round challah. Once I have measured the piece of dough, I will roll it out in a ball and put it in my plastic bag so the dough stay pliable and moist and if you use a damp cloth, it will work but not as well as the plastic bag. While I separate my balls of dough, let me share with you where the mitzvah of Avrashat Rala comes from. It comes from the Torah, or some will call it the Old Testament, in Numbers chapter 15, verses 19 and 20, as it says, And it shall be when you eat from the bread of the land, you shall set aside a portion of dough for God. You shall offer it up as a gift for God. The first of your dough, chala, you shall offer as a gift. In the natural world, when you give something away, there is less of it. But the Torah informs us that the more we give away, the more we will have, and this is the idea of tzedakah or charity. We do not realize that by giving tzedakah, we will merit the blessing of more parnasa or sustenance. Chala is the same way. Somehow, even after separating a piece of dough, we still have enough to make many, many chala. When we become used to giving, it turns us into unselfish people who learn what it means to be givers and not takers. We become people who do not just put ourselves first, we put someone else or something else ahead of ourselves. When we give of ourselves, we receive a lot more than we give. Just like a burning flame that gives away its light, yet its own light never dies, so too with chala. Today I will do my five, six and special chala just for you. Once I took out all my balls, I closed the bag to keep the dough nice and pliable. I will then start preparing my strands. I roll them out evenly with a rolling pin. The advantage of the rolling pin is that it takes out all the air bubbles of the strand and it will make a smoother chala. If I don't have a rolling pin, no problem. I will simply use my fingers to flatten the dough against my working surface, making sure to remove all the small bubbles in my dough and then I can continue to the next step. Once my dough is rolled out, I will simply roll it onto itself, forming a cigar and closing the seam to have the most beautiful strands for my chala. I roll out my strand one more time and I repeat the process with the next ball of dough. While I prepare the other strands, let me explain to you why we braid our chala. We took care to mix all the ingredients to make a cohesive dough and this is like how we work on ourselves to become a better person. We could say, I did my part, I worked on myself, but what happens when I deal with the others? And this is the same way about chala. Each strand also is beautiful, but when we braid the chala, we show we are not here to try to be perfect on our own, in our corner, we intertwine our life with the people around us to form a unit, a community, all working in the same direction. Everyone has its place and together we are stronger. Once my strands are all rolled out, I will start braiding. You can use a bowl or a rolling pin to hold the top of your strands if when you braid you feel everything is moving and it makes the chala braid uneven. I take the first strand to the right and I will bring it to the right of the first strand on the left. Then I put the strand on the left side in the middle. I twist the braid two and three together and I repeat the process until I reach the end. When I arrive to the end and I cannot braid anymore, I will simply gather all the ends together, smush them and then roll them out to form a tail to my chala. On the other side, I will do exactly the same thing and I will roll out the extremity. Once it's done, I will fluff out the chala to make sure that we see all the design of the braid. 
I take three strands of 40 grams each and I will braid them from the middle. When I reach the end, I roll it out and then I will flip my braid to continue braiding from the middle again, which usually gives a better looking braid. Once I'm done, I roll it out. I try to make a braid as equal as possible in width, so I pinch it out a little bit. And then I will roll my braid onto itself. Once I'm done, as you can see, we have a beautiful flower design. I will place it in the middle of our twist and turn, and I will bring the extremities of the khala, and I will tuck the extremities one under the other. I place my khala on a cooking sheet lined with parchment paper, then I let it rise 45 minutes covered at room temperature. I will start my six strands khala, and even though it looks very daunting, it is very easy, especially with the song of my daughters. The song goes second to the top, first in the middle, then you switch on the other side and you continue the song. Second to the top, first in the middle, and on the other side, second to the top. First in the middle, next side, second to the top, first in the middle, and you continue until the end of the khala. While I'm braiding, let me explain to you why we usually braid a khala with six strands. In Judaism, the number six represents the six days of the week, while the khala itself represents the seventh day, that is Shabbat. Because when we have two chalot, each containing six strands, on our Shabbat table, it equals 12. The number 12 represents the number of tribes of Israel to include everyone in this mitzvah. And this is why today I wanted to show you how I braid six strands chala to make sure you feel included in my chala making. Once I'm done braiding my khala, I will tuck the edges under the khala. And if there's extra dough, like on this side, no problem. You simply remove it and you will add it to another ball. And I repeat the same thing on the other side. I will then cover them and let them rise for 45 minutes at room temperature, covered. I will take this opportunity to preheat my oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit on the convection mode to have a beautiful and equal baking. After 45 minutes, the chalot have doubled in size and I will glaze them with a mixture of egg, salt and a bit of water to emulsify the fat and give us the smoothest egg wash. You could also use maple syrup as a glaze or agave syrup if you're vegan. While I spread the egg wash in every nook and cranny of the khala, I ask God to spread his love over us. I add my toppings. Today I'm using sesame seeds. I will add pinches of sesame seeds on top of the khala if I want a light coat of sesame seeds. But if I want a denser coat of sesame seed, I will wet a paper towel, roll my strand on the paper towel to make the surface of the khala more sticky, then I will place them on a baking sheet filled with sesame seeds. I make sure I roll them completely in the seeds to be fully coated. I would do the same process with poppy seeds or any other topping. When I add the sesame seeds, which represent in our community our merits, I ask that our merits be increased like the number of grains of sesame on our khala. Finally, it is time to put our khala in the oven and I pray that these khala and your khala are going to be delicious. After 30 minutes in the oven, here are the khala. We will enjoy them on Shabbat with our three meals and of course, during our holidays. And if you're wondering how soft, airy, and delicious this khala is, here is a preview. Mm. 
I hope that you enjoyed this ultimate guide to making challah bread and it's super easy and delicious challah bread recipe. And my prayer to you is that you will be inspired to try to make this amazing food that not only nourishes your body, but your soul alike. And I would love to know what part of the process of making challah really resonated with you. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. And know that in my book, you are my khala, my special treat that transcends the physical world. And if you're here until the end, please write in the comments. I love khala. So I know I was not alone. And if nobody told you today, know that you are loved and you are enough just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe. Stay blessed and don't forget to from it up. Or lay lazy in bed with your head on my chest. I hope you don't mind.